Hi, and welcome to my video series of Biotechnics Explained in 5 Minutes, where I explain a concept of biology in less than 5 minutes. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button, and please leave your comments after this video. Your comments give me motivation to make more such videos. Now, today's installment, we will talk about the yeast artificial chromosome, or YAK. So, let us talk about the features of YAK. YAK has centromeric sequence, which is essential for it to propagate inside the yeast. It has yeast origin of replication and also origin of replication in bacteria. You must be wondering why it has ori of bacteria. Because most of the cases, the yak is designed in such a manner that it could work like a shuttle vector. It can shuttle between yeast and bacteria. So that's why it has bacterial, art bacterial uh, origin of replication as well. Now, it has telomeric sequence because telomere is important for stability of any chromosome inside a eukaryote, right? And selectable marker, and selectable marker for both the species for bacteria and for the yeast. Now at the end it has multiple cloning site which is the common feature because any cloning vector should have multiple cloning site. And then strategically two BAM H1 sites are placed flanking the telomeres and we'll learn about why they're specially uh, designed to kept there and all. So yeast artificial chromosome is a cloning vector and specially it is used to clone big DNA fragments as big as like several megabase pairs. So in circular format, yeast can be grown inside a bacteria. Now they can be isolated just like a plasmid and then we digest it using the BAMH1. Remember the BAMH1 sites were flanking the telomere. So if you restrict with BAMH1, then the fragment a certain fragment would fall off and that is washed away that's a stuffer fragment and the circular vector is now linearized and this linear linearized vector is now can be restricted with another enzyme which is present in its multiple cloning site let's say eco r1 and after restriction digestion in the multiple cloning site we can insert our gene of interest or the DNA fragment of interest which could range from several KBs to several MBs and that's the biggest advantage of using yeast artificial chromosome because it has a huge carrying capacity and yet it is quite stable. Now after inserting the gene of interest now we have to insert this whole yeast artificial chromosome vector inside a uh, yeast and that is done by transformation reaction. In case of yeast, the preferred transformation mode is by, via electroporation because yeast has cell wall and it is very hard to get the DNA in with just a uh, heat shock method. So transformation via electroporation is the preferred method. Then it, it is grown in form of colonies and next day when you see the colonies, you would find the recombinant colonies should be red in color because yeast is, yeast artificial chromosome was initially designed in such a way that it has a suppressor 4 gene as a screenable marker in its multiple cloning site now once you and uh, once you clone your gene of interest or dna fragment of interest in this multiple cloning site it would disrupt the sub 4 gene now this sub suppressor 4 cannot anymore suppress the uh, red color of the yeast colonies and that's why the recombinant colonies are all red so any red colonies you see they are recombinants now yeast artificial chromosomes are specially used to make genomic dna libraries especially for those uh, genomes which are really big like human genome or like mammalian genome etc and yeast artificial chromosomes could be used for making transgenic mouse models especially cloning those genes which are very big now Instead of having all these kind of advantages, there are several disadvantage, disadvantages as well. Like yeast artificial chromosome, it's very hard to handle, hard to propagate. Its stability is an issue. It always get fragmented. And due to many other issues, people stopped using yeast artificial chromosome as a preferable vector and they switched to bacterial artificial chromosome in order to have a higher carrying capacity vector. In order to learn more about bacterial artificial chromosome, please uh, hit on the link at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your comments is my motivation. So please comment at the end of this video. Thank you.